Hey everyone, I'm Colin Weston, host of the Mod Golf Podcast. Welcome to our YouTube channel where today I am speaking to Richard Zokel, Dick Zokel, as you may remember him from the PGA Tour, two time PGA Tour winner. And we're going to be talking today about the work he's doing with Mind Track Golf, of which he's the founder and CEO. Dick and I jumped on our long form audio podcast uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, and now we're circling back to put together this little piece here for you. So we're going to be asking some different questions, and this is taking place right after the PGA Championship, which Phil Mickelson, as you all are probably aware of, he won at the age of 50. And we're going to talk about mindfulness and centering and breath and visualization and all those good things. But before we get into that, I want to welcome Dick back to the Mod Golf Podcast. Dick, Dick how are you doing today? Doing great, Colin. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had a, a bunch of things transpire since we last spoke a couple of weeks ago, and it's good to be back with you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, to start off here, because of course, the Mod Golf Podcast, we're, we're not doing anything as infomercially here. We love your entrepreneurial journey, which we talked about, and your kind of your transformation or transitioning from one career to another to another, which I love. You're always curious, and you're always looking uh looking forward in the future and i try to embrace that myself so first of all why don't we start with this why don't you tell our viewers here what you're working on with mind track golf sure well okay let me get i guess it's a appropriate to do a kind of a 60 second elevator pitch is that what you're looking for go okay. for it yeah. sure okay well as i'm the founder and ceo of mind track golf mind track golf is an innovative coaching tool it's a mindset driven protocol that tracks and measures performance on the golf course. Um, Mind track simplifies the game and it conditions you to stay in this present moment for every shot on the golf course. You learn to detach emotionally from the results and you gain, you gain your freedom back. We we watched what Phil Mickelson did in his mindfulness in this past weekend. It's a good example of, of being mindful and training your mind. So we are entering uncontested market space. We're building a moat around our business. We are an app. We're, uh, our, and our team consists of business, golf, and IT experts. And uh, I think since the last time we spoke, uh, Sean Foley has joined our board of directors. And he's come on board as a partner. And we're very excited about that. We are a $5.99 recurring revenue model. And it brings an in, uh, incredible value proposition to a large consumer base. So uh, we've uh, built a, and beta tested uh, our MVP, uh, had some remarkable results. We turned some uh, Canadian tour players around now, Corn Ferry tour player, and onto the PGA tour, uh, Taylor Pendrith. We, turned, we helped him turn his world around. And basically, Mind Track Golf is um, it's a key that unlocks your freedom. Uh, it changes your thoughts, it changes your mind, it changes your game, and it changes your life. And uh, we're excited to get this ball rolling. Love it. Love it. I love the entrepreneurial <laughs> mindset you uh, that you're putting forward here. And uh, wanted to ask you this, though, because you talk about this elite level golf, whether it's professional golfers, mm -hmm. they're a very small piece of the overall golf player pie. How about Absolutely. someone like myself, a 15 handicap, who then, as I mentioned to you earlier, mm -hmm. I played great on the front nine, shot 38, getting excited, maybe going to break 80 today, mm -hmm. and then I blow up on the back. Getting and ahead of yourself. bad holes, and I was nine over on that. So so myself is, is a huge market as compared mm -hmm. to the elite players, which are great for you as validators and, and ambassadors, of course, for this. So can Mind Track Golf help someone like me? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think when we use professional golfers as an example, because the, the golfer thinks the prefer, professional golfer has everything, they've got it, and they don't. So if a professional golfer has a weak mind or has room for improvement, the average golfer has even more of an advantage to, to improve their mind. So if you're one of those people, like and I explained, that gets ahead of themselves, I think that's exactly what you were talking about. Or if you're one of those people, when people are watching you, your attention goes to them and you go to that, oh, what, what are they going to think of me if I don't hit a good shot? Th that's the dysfunctional thinking that we train you to get out of. So any type of performance anxiety uh, situation, this model helps you through it, whether it's public speaking, whether it's golfing, whether you're a, an executive that needs to make a, a difficult decision 
uh, in, a, in a tough situation or you're an NFL quarterback or you're a, a, a Navy SEAL sniper. You have to focus your, 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 your attention and recondition yourself to focus on what we call these two key performance markers. And you put your attention solely on it. When you do a good job of that, then the results become a byproduct. Love it. Love it. So let's rewind the tape a little bit here and talk about your aha moment with Mind Track Golf, which I know was many years, if not decades, in the making. So why don't you talk a bit about the insights yep. you had when you were on the tour, which got you the nickname and the moniker Disco Dick, yep. uh, which you love. And <laughs> so tell us about that as far as how you were already ahead of the curve a little bit for yourself to become more mindful and in the moment and centered and all the things that you're now embedding in mind track mm -hmm. golf to help people like me. Well, the first moment I, I got into kind of the, the psychology space in golf was my rookie year. And I had some challenges because of anxiety and thinking ahead and expectations. And, and I, I got ahead of myself so much that it was disrupting my performance. So uh, th my intuition said, why don't you listen to a Walkman? <clears throat> listen to music during competition. So I did. And the very first time I did this, I, sh I shot seven under par 65, led the tournament. And that was an aha moment that allowed me that to really grab hold that golf is a psychological game, as is life. And then I had another aha moment at 2000 at the US Open. Uh, when I when I created this protocol and went out on Sunday, I think I, I mentioned to you that I went out and w had really learned to detach from my, the results and I went out and shot 30 on the front nine on Sunday at 2000 and that's a US Open record but more importantly is the aha moment that we had with Taylor Pendrith just a couple of years ago Taylor was on the Canadian tour and he was struggling at the time he came out of Kent State and, and he was he wasn't performing for a couple of years so I sat him and a couple other guys down on Golf Canada's young pro squad and I said to them I said look you've got all the tools that it's that you can be successful he says but but what's going to determine whether you're going to be successful or not as a professional are the daily thoughts that run through your mind. So if you have these out of control thoughts that project forward, that create anxiety, I don't care how good you're going to be. You're not going to make it. You have to utilize and condition yourself like all champions. And that's to detach emotionally from the result and get into this process. So our process in mind track golf conditions you to focus and put your attention on your two key performance markers. Your ability to assess, pick the right club or read the right shot or read the, the green and then execute and learn to. And when you we collect this data information in a process, it sends you a report. It sends your coaches a report and you're able to look at your performance using key performance markers. We're the first um, uh, concept in, in golf using KPIs, a business model of performance. So then you learn when your attention goes to this measurement point, you, you inadvertently don't even realize it, that you're detaching from the result. And it's a very, we watch Phil Mickelson move into this mindfulness space and he's doing it, I think, through perhaps maybe some Eastern meditations because he talked about how he was, it's more of, a, he didn't want to explain how spiritual it was. So that gives me uh, information that I think Phil's doing the the deep dive into the Eastern meditation, which is wonderful because it gets you to the same place. Nice, nice. So you talk about the ups and downs, whether it's emotionally bad when uh, you melt down or blow up like I did the other day, or let's even say uh, in the PGA Championship when Phil rolled that one into the water, I think he, he had a bogey, then a bogey. What, you know, what would be that mindset for, uh, you know, centering yourself when something goes bad or even when Phil and he did what Phil does, I think it was right. the third or fourth or fifth hole where of course he's in the sand and of course he dunks yeah. it like three bounces and it's in. So how do you manage those really high positives and the, right. and the lows so you can actually stay focused and visualize? So how, how does the app and the KPIs that you're, that you're putting forward with those indicators help so you as a golfer when you're out there in real time in the moment to fall back on of what you've actually put the work in with mind track golf. Sure. So the, the system is an absolute re reset for every single shot. So regardless if you hit a, you, the outcome of the shot is good or bad, um, you have to reset. So in the final round of the, with the uh, PGA, when Brooks Kepka and, and Phil were going at it, you may have noticed, you, you know, there were five two-shot swings 
in, mm-hmm. in, in one of those was the fifth hole where Phil sunk it from the waist area and had another two shot swing there in his favor. And th- the important thing is, is every time, every shot is possibly going to produce an emotional outcome, whether it's a good outcome or a bad. So obviously, if you make an ex- excellent execution and you make a hole in one, you're excited, you're jumping around. And if you don't let go of that emotion for your next shot, it'll disrupt that shot. Just as if you shank two shots off the tee out of bounds, you're, uh, you're going to be emotionally attached to that result. And you've got to then, when you get to the next shot, you have to reset, ask yourself the question, what's my assessment? What's, and then can I make this execution? And your goal with every single shot is to make an excellent assessment, and an excellent execution, and you capture those data points. The club used, your evaluation of your uh, assessment and your evaluation of your execution, and then that's what you put your, your attention on. The reports show you how many shots and lost and shots gained and shots lost that you have, and they're attached to which key performance marker caused them, and it gives you a report of your performance on the golf course, and it allows your coach to teach you where you are hemorrhaging most of your golf shots. So it's, it's a, it's a pretty simple concept. Got it. Got it. One thing I, I failed to mention when you're talking about your aha moment, you mentioned a Sony Walkman, which any of our viewers under 30 might be saying, what is a Sony Walkman? <laughs> so right over here, I am going to put a picture of a Sony Walkman. So all of you will know, especially the one in the yellow, the sport Walkman was my favorite back from the eighties. <laughs> I don't know about you, Dick, but uh, that's the one that uh, I definitely liked. Yeah, so, it's... I wanted... Go ahead. <laughs> so I want to ask you this as we finish up. Uh, back to the entrepreneurial side uh, and the business side. So mm-hmm. when you looked at Mind Track Golf, it's like, yes, this works for me. It works for others. But is there a business here? What is the size of the market? We talk about oh, the gosh, yeah. ham or the total accessible market and the serviceable market and the attainable market. So you, when you were doing the business uh, backdrop on this, can you tell us about that? How big of a, a market uh, that you could access here with, with the app? It's a huge market, I think, as you're aware. Um, the the, the uh, golf industry worldwide has grown to 84 billion annually. Our t- total addressable market is 55 million golfers uh, worldwide, uh, but we're going to focus on our, our, our service addressable market, our SAM, as we call it, which are the 30 million golfers in North America. And, and that category has a couple of subcategories. So the core golfers, there's seven in the avid golfer group. There's 7.1 million uh, core gro- golfers, or sorry, avid golfers, mm-hmm. moderate golfers, which is eight rounds or more. There's another 15 million of those, and we'll even access those occasional golfers who play less than eight rounds a year. Those people, you know, want to improve, but their daily life, their kids, their business, um, um, uh, slow them down, but they want to improve. So. Our, our market very, is very strong, and uh, we know all that, that that consumer, that person, spends a great deal, probably about $4,000 a year on their golf. And uh, this, and we anticipate, everyone can understand that golf is a, a psychological, a psycho, psychosomatic game. And everyone, including the best players in the world, know they can improve on this. So the question is, would they pay $5.99 a month to do this. So the answer is obvious. They spend thousands and thousands of dollars to improve their golf game and and they don't make much headway. So we believe this is going to be a very value, a tremendous value proposition for those people who want to improve their game. There we go. Exciting. Well, I certainly want to follow up and uh, talk to you again to see the trajectory that you are on. I know you're early in the market now that uh, you are, you are out there now. So let everybody know out there, uh, with the app, is it on both uh, Mac, iOS, and also Android, or just one or the other? So it, right now, we're in, in the App Store only. So it's only available in an iOS. And right now, it's free. If you, like, we're so, we bait, we put it out in the App Store, and I think we've got a, a few, a couple thousand downloads. But still, you, there isn't enough um, traffic to it. So you will, if you Google search it, you won't find it. You actually have to punch in those, um, the address, which is, M-I-N-D-T-R-A-K golf, mindtrackgolf.com. And, um, and we, we, 
our next uh, version will be in an Android and we'll get it on Google Play as well. So we, we anticipate, right now it's free, so go get it and uh, test it out. And, and if you have any questions, reach out and we are to support and we'll, 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 we'll get you going on it. But uh, in, the, in the short, in the near future, we will be coming out as a, a monthly subscription model. Nice, nice. Well, I will include down below, as you can see now, the link to the MindTrack website that Dick just mentioned there. It's again, it's available on iOS, free to download, to give it a shot. I'm going to do the same. So perhaps I'll become a little more mindful. So the next time I shoot 38, like yesterday on the front, hopefully I can keep it together and I don't shoot 50 on the back. So, uh, so there's lots of room for improvement with my game too. So Dick Sokol, two-time PGA Tour winner, founder and CEO of MindTrack Golf. Dick, amazing to talk to you again. It's, uh, you know, your energy level is, uh, is great. It's infectious, your enthusiasm as an entrepreneur. And uh, I appreciate spending the time with you. It's good to see you again. Well, it's good getting to know you, Colin. Thank you very much. And uh, it's, uh, I appreciate you having me on your, on your podcast.